fam, it's Tasha Mabe prepping. So in the midst of it, chaos all around us in the real world and right now for us in our own home, right? I mean, look at all this behind me. Just, just everything is everywhere. I wanted to talk about a topic that I actually talked about this with my members, right? I did a video on this for them um, a few months ago, and that was it, basically, are we are we safe? Um, are preppers safe? Is it safe to be a prepper? Is it safe to call yourself a prepper? Is it safe to say that you are somebody who prepares and stockpiles and thinks about your family and and you know? Is it definitely okay for you to talk about some other beliefs or other things that you might think are out there that you want to prepare for, right? Maybe a little bit more extreme uh, natural disasters, right? You're, you know, you're looked at as a loony, a loony, okay? And, but it becomes, you know, are we actually safe? Can, can harm come to us by you know saying these things and letting people know that hey you do prepare and buying a little bit of extra food and and ma making sure that you're prepared for different things that might happen to you and your family like storms or a fire or whatever right and really shortly to answer it you know I, I don't know the answer to that okay I think that there are easy ways to say yes that it's dangerous to be a prepper today and then I think that there's things that support like, no, we're fine. Um, regardless of what happens, you are going to be more prepared and more ready, right? And even if that is somebody trying to do you harm, you're gonna be ready, right? Um, total collapse, you're gonna be you're gonna be okay, right? The things that could cause you danger or harm by you just preparing by itself is already preparing you for some of those other things, right? Um, but it comes down to my total belief that, look, everybody should be preparing. We have gotten away uh, as a society of teaching our family and teaching each other how to survive, right? How to be self-sufficient, how to do things yourself, like, like our families used to do, you guys, used to do our own food and raise our own animals and we had to do things with our two hands right and we didn't have this society where you basically can at any moment pick up a device tell it to get you something find you something and you can get it and and although that is great and and that's beautiful and that's easy um then when something hard happens hardship happens everybody freaks out and doesn't know how to you know deal with that and so I'm just gonna walk you through, these are like 10 things that I think every American should know how to do. Now, this is not an all-inclusive list. There's all types of stuff that I believe that everybody should know how to do. But these are some just basics that I think we should get back to doing, right? We should get back to doing these things for ourselves, okay? So that we can be more prepared as a society, as a whole, not just individual families. So some other things I have on my list, you guys, is Number one, I just talked about it, and that was preserving food. You know, knowing um, how to preserve food, how to keep food. I, I think that everybody should get a pressure canner and learn how to pressure can. Yes, you can water bathe. Yes, you. There's some electric versions of pressure canning. Um, whether you believe in that or not, that's kind of a controversy. Um, but my my point is, I think that we should get back to knowing how to do things with our own hands, knowing and and having to have the ability to save food and make it last longer, okay? And those are skills that are lost that a lot of people don't know how to do. Yes, there are people that are learning how to do it now today, but I believe that every American in their home, each home should know how to preserve food, canned food. But we're talking about a society where you could just pick up and get food at, at you know, at a, at a drop of a hat, right? Um, so maybe it's not even preserving food, it's going back and teaching ourselves how to cook food, okay? And how to cook real food, not processed food, that not food that's already halfway done or partially cooked or it's already prepared and we're just putting it together to make a meal. I'm talking about old fashioned, real food, clean eating for you guys, you know, in today's society, right? All clean eating is, is real food, you guys, not processed. Um, so let's get back to 
to learning how to cook and preserving food. My number two thing is growing food in any capacity, any capacity. You can Google right now, hey, what should I be growing right now? What should I be getting ready to grow right now? What grow zone am I in right now? Just Google it, find it out. Then say what plants grow in this grow zone? Like literally there, there's so much at our fingertips that you can use that to help you then learn how to do things with your hands, right? Learn how to grow food um, that you wanna eat, right? Um, in your garden, what time of year to grow it, what can be grown indoors, outdoors, the whole nine, okay? But I think that every American, every family should learn and be taught how to grow your own food, okay? Super important and there's a lot more that goes to it than just putting a seed in the ground. The third, number third thing I have is raising animals. You know, this is gonna be very new for us. We have no animals right now. We plan to get animals. We are still in total chaos here. I do not see us getting these animals anytime soon right now because we, are the, first of all, us getting here, the house is 10 times worse than what we were expecting, right? Coming back into it, not living here for several years ourselves, somebody else living here. And so there is a ton of maintenance and stuff that has to be done before we can even really unpack our stuff, let alone getting into all the stuff outside of the home, like animals and gardens and this and that. So it's chaotic to say the least, um, but these are things that every family should be learning how to do, okay? On whatever level that means, okay? The next thing I have is emergency prep. So whether that's emergency prep bags, kits, but basically every family should have the basic emergency uh, items, requirements, right? Flashlights, candles, extra batteries, food, water, emergency food that you know doesn't take a lot, your alternate everything, right? Having the ability to do basic emergency stuff in your home, something happens, um, tarps, uh, duct tape, you know, things like that you should have, okay? Um, but on top of that, because there's basic lists that you have, that goes into my next thing that every family should have, and that's be thinking about their grid down um, plan. Grid down plan to include, you know, all the things you need um, to live your life with in a grid down situation. No power in your home. How would you continue to do the things that you do now? Every family should have the things that they need. If you, if it's cold where you live, what is your alternate heating source uh, for keeping your family warm when the power goes out, okay? Um, but my belief is having a solid grid down plan and the things in place to make that easier, right? Go working towards a self-sufficient, um, you know, uh, solar powered situation whatever it is but be thinking about your grid down plan the next thing is just educating our children right showing your children how to do all these things how to preserve food how to raise animals how to do everything okay when you buy these emergency preps and you buy these things and you stage them in different areas having conversations about the plans when would you employ them when would you um, need to use them where are they at where are they as are a little bit in each room does everybody know where it's at when would we evacuate the different levels of what could happen those things need to be educated into our children so that they know what's going on and they're not in the dark when something happens and when something happens you're not spending time trying to get them on board with what's going on okay next thing I have is stockpiling um, your, your, your meds, right? Learning how to take care of yourself holistically, knowing plants, knowing, having tinctures, having your meds stockpiled, having your backups to when your prescribed medic medication is not there anymore. Basically, every American should know what they need to do to be able to take care of themselves medically. Yes, I get it. There's some stuff you can't do <coughs> <coughs> yourself, right? I get it, you, you're you not a doctor, there's stuff that's you know above our heads we can't handle. But there's a lot of basic stuff that you know we would run to the doctor to go see. Or maybe we just, it's at a low enough level that if we just taught ourselves and learned a little bit, we could handle ourselves um, on treating symptoms, on basic symptoms, okay? The next one is medical preps, right? Having all the medical things, right? Medical medicines is one thing, your vitamins, all that. But the other thing is um, medical supplies, right? Having bandages and band-aids and 
um, Neosporin and, you know, crutches and all the different things, a suture kit, a tourniquet, all the different medical, ha again, having that stuff coupled with the medicines, you can do stuff yourself, okay? And being prepared and having those things um, makes you where you don't have to be so dependent on a government or if you're not able to be dependent on a government, right? Something has happened, you can't even go out and get help anymore, you have to do it yourself, you are prepared to do so, okay? And I think that this is a loss a lost skill. It's something that every family should know how to do. Every family should know how to do basic medicine, okay? Basic stuff. All right. Next thing I have, uh, I have two more, you guys. One is I think that every household should have a wood stove. I know that's kind of a weird one. People are like, wood stove, like we have heat, we have other sources of heat, we don't need a wood stove. I just think that it's an old fashioned, very practical thing to have in a home, in, in any home, in any and every home, okay? You never know when you're gonna need a fire. Even if you live somewhere hot, you never know when you're gonna need a fire to boil water that could save your life, you know, sterilize an inter instrument that you're using on somebody trying to um, help, you know, somebody who's gotten cut or gotten hurt. Like there's all types of things or reasons why it is important to have fire right in your life and so by having a wood stove and have a capability for a fire i think is 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 huge plus it's a backup for for lighting it's a backup for heat there's so many uses okay and you have a great um renewable resource in wood that you could use for it so i think that you know for me being a prepper every family should have a wood stove in their home even if it is a wood stove that predominantly where you live you do not use all the time right but having that ability and having that backup to me is vital next thing i have uh or last thing is alternate power source basically how is how are you powering things right um and i say this in so many ways too this isn't just hey you should have a generator yes there's generators uh, you have all types of generators. You have solar generators. You can have a solar bank. You can have actual solar system set up. You can have a gasifier. You can have a wood stove. It, and all of this stuff. There's a lot of different areas or ways that I could go when I when it comes to powering and what I mean by that. Right? Just having extra batteries and stuff to me is a way for extra power. Right? So. To me, every family should have a game plan on what is their alternate power source, what are they working on um, for having um, options, right? A variety of options on, on powering things and, and fueling things that you're gonna need to, to do later possibly, okay? Um, these are just 10 things that I think every is important for every family to know and to learn. I think it's super important that if you and your family are not doing one of these things or don't have one of these things, just sit down, take a pen and paper and just write down some ideas and some things that you might wanna get. Or maybe there's an area, okay, I, we do this, but we have holes. So maybe let's just take a little bit and concentrate on filling those holes. Um, but let's get back to, to knowing how to do stuff for ourselves, right? With our own two hands, with our friends, with our family near us. I'm, and we don't know everything. Everybody doesn't know everything. But if we get back to talking to each other and engaging and doing things with our hands and learning how to do things again, um, I think that there's, there's something that comes back that, that's been lost for a very, very long time, okay? And... Um, and I think that the farther away that we get from these things, then the fear does come, you know, are we safe? You know, because we become outsiders that are doing all these weird things when it really, these are normal things that everybody should be doing. It shouldn't be a preppers are weird or preppers, you know, we, we're fearful that something's going to happen to us because we're preppers, okay? Um, is it dangerous times? In a lot of other ways, it is, okay? Um... Things are wild right now. Things are crazy. And so I would say maybe not just preppers that it's a dangerous time for, but it's a dangerous time for anybody and everybody on all different fronts, okay? And so take it for what you want. I'd love to hear in the comments below what you guys think. Um, you know, do you think that preppers are dangerous? Uh, are are um, in a dangerous way, right? Do you think that we should be fearful of anything? Um, do you think that we're in danger of being hurt or being prosecuted or whatever it is? I'd love to have those conversations. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow on the next video. Take care. Bye.